let's go. Mike Bobo is your new Georgia offensive coordinator. Comment down below if you believe this was the right move for Kirby Smart as Todd Monken has decided to actually go to the National Football League where he will be the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. And who wouldn't want to be Lamar Jackson's OC and who wouldn't want to go back to the pros? And that's exactly what Todd Monken has decided to do. Now, the first thing I want to do before I get into my thoughts on Mike Bobo is celebrate Monken, who quite frankly was the best play caller in all the sport last year with this innovative 12 personnel sets. Obviously, it helps out having Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington and a 25-year-old very talented quarterback in Stetson Bennett. But the truth is, Monken's offensive schematic genius was nothing short of incredible. The different sets, the different motions, it was a ton of fun to watch this guy cook. And I can't wait to see what he's going to do with Lamar Jackson at the NFL level. But now it is all about, well, Mike Bobo. Is he the guy that Georgia should have gone with? Now, the first thing is, why did Georgia decide to hire Bobo this quickly? Well, the first thing is he was already on staff as an offensive analyst at Georgia. So it makes a lot of sense that uh, Kirby decided to hire from within and also, Mike Bobo is one of his closest friends and allies. They both were actually teammates at Georgia. One is 48, the other is 47. Uh, they have also coached together at Georgia many a years ago, and obviously, they are on the same staff now. And, of course, uh, Mike Bobo had some success as an offensive coordinator in the past, including a stint at Georgia before his current job as an offensive analyst at Georgia. And obviously now he is the OC. Boom! Looking at you. Yes, yeah, I know you've already subscribed and rang the bell. We're on the way to 2,000 subscribers. And right now you're looking at uh, Kirby Smart's resume. Um, after looking at Mike Bobo's resume, you can see how similar uh, they are together. Even though Kirby, of course, coached on the defensive side of the football and Bobo on the offensive side of the football. These two guys know each other pretty well. And obviously, Georgia had to move. Uh, you know, th th this is very late in the cycle to be losing an offensive coordinator. So who out there could Georgia have gotten? Well, uh, they could have basically gotten anyone. There are a lot of OCs that have accomplished a lot that would have packed their bags immediately to go be Kirby Smart's offensive coordinator. Remember, there is some extra value in being an offensive coordinator with a defensive minded head coach it gives you a little bit more autonomy you are definitely going to be the one that calls the shots so you know there, there would have been quite a few people out there that would be very interested in this Georgia offensive coordinator job but Kirby decided to move pretty quickly and hire someone that he trusts and obviously Bobo is that guy now much like we did with our uh Georgia um, I say Georgia, our Alabama thing with Tommy Reese, we go to the one stat that I always like to look at, and that is yards per play. And recently, Mike Bobo has been an offensive coordinator at not one, but two schools. He was an OC at Auburn and an OC at South Carolina. And as you can see, his yard per play numbers when Power 5 adjusted were amongst the worst in the SEC. Now, I know what a lot of Georgia fans will say. Well, uh, he didn't have a whole lot to work with. He only got to spend a year at both of his stops. So what can you really say? And I get that. But the truth is that they weren't necessarily productive stops for him. Now, though, he does have Brock Bowers to work with. He does have more talent to work with. And, of course, he's got Kirby Smart, who has been the best coach in the sport the past couple of seasons to work with as well. So, you know, I do think it is worth mentioning that Bobo is a guy that um, uh, hasn't had the absolute most success as an offensive coordinator. He's not been just awful, but he's been okay. Also, since he was an analyst last year, Kirby wants continuity. Why would he want to bring in someone with a fresh set of ideas uh, when the offense for Georgia has been the best um, in the sport 
uh, uh, this past year. So, you know, I I totally get why uh, Kirby decided to go with Mike Bobo because it is kind of sort of an in-house hire with Bobo being an offensive analyst this past year. Now, schematically, I do expect uh, Georgia to change some things up with uh, Mike, but I expect a lot more of the same, right? Yes, you lose uh, Washington to the NFL, but you do have Oscar Delp. You do have... Uh, a very deep tight end room. So they will still run a lot of 12 personnel, especially with Carson Beck, who is a quarterback who is very similar to Stetson Bennett in many ways. I I expect Georgia's offense to look very similar to what it was last year. But maybe I am totally wrong on that. So comment down below your thoughts on today's video. Let me know if you believe Georgia ended up making uh, the right decision here. I totally understand uh, Monken going to be the offense coordinator for Lamar Jackson. NFL jobs rarely come up, especially NFL jobs where you get the most important asset in the sport, which is an elite quarterback. So totally get why Monken decided to go back to the NFL where, you know, he spent many a year. So I, I get it. Um and honestly, a few thoughts here at the end on Todd Monken. I, I'm telling you from a, a film guy, I freaking loved watching his offense. His offense was very innovative, very different, um, lots of different motions. And, you know, one thing I, I, I think about Georgia that is uh, very fascinating is so many people view them as – a team that's just full of five-star talent, and that is the only reason they win all these games. And it is a big reason. It is the most important reason. Every coach will tell you having better players is by far the most important thing, the raw talent, the raw recruiting grades, and all of that. But the truth is, Georgia just outcoached a lot of people. Their schemes were very advanced. Um, and, and they did a lot of things to outnumber you offensively that was quite genius um I mean as a guy that does a film study breakdown of pretty much every LSU game where I break down every play on power hour LSU um there was no game that I charted that was as good as the Georgia called game versus LSU the linebackers for LSU which were very very good um arguably the best in the SEC uh, they, they were put in a blender. I mean, they were guessing uh, quite a bit, and that was not just really good players running the offense. That was just really good uh, schematic variety, and uh, Monken did a great job of that, and I expect Bobo to do a lot of that as well. I, I've seen you know, a few uh, Georgia writers point out how much they freaking loved watching Mike Bobo's offense in years past, so you know what, what we'll see. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you, you get a lot of talent to work with. And I'm telling you, if you have Brock Bowers, you have a chance, right? I think uh, one player who will emerge next year is uh, Branson Robinson, 22. He looked really good um, as a deep-cut backup uh, for, for Georgia. So comment down below your thoughts on today's video. It was a fun one. Very quick breaking news story. Obviously, college football world, it's always moving. So you guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It is Power Hour SEC BAM! And tonight, we're doing some brisket. Let's go!